Alright folks, welcome along to a new video. I am Walter P. Barnstormer and today we're going to be taking a look at the amount of income you can generate from any given field of any given size using any of the crops that you want and then we'll also look at the different bonuses that can be applied to it. So different weed levels, whether or not you've rolled the ground, mulched the ground, it's been ploughed, limed, fertilizer etc has been applied to it. Now I will stress that this is looking at base game so we're not using any mods on this. The only mod I've used on this is Easy Development Mod and that's purely to get my base figures from it because it's actually a really good way of estimating what yields you'll get automatically and I've kind of extrapolated a few things out from that. But it should still be accurate. I did a couple of test runs. That's kind of what's playing in the background at the minute. You can see me trying to see how much straw I get from weeded fields, non-weeded fields, etc. Things like that. So I've had to make a slight adjustment as what Easy Development gives you is uh, I think it worked out 98.85% accurate so it overestimates ever so slightly but the figures I'm going to show you shortly they take that into account and these are the real world figures that I experienced on this map I'm using Obelleron so it's a standard stock map and these are the figures that I got from that a bit of an explanation around what we're looking at here to start with so on this spreadsheet here I've defined what crop we're looking at and then what size the field is. Everything is initially based around a one acre field. Uh, I've used acres instead of hectares just because that's what the map was set on at the time. Um, so everything's based on that and then scales up from that. With regards to things like the straw figure, I discovered then that it's not really tied into anything other than the yield of the crop. So basically if you get 10,000 liters of barley, you will get X liters of straw. If you get 5,000 liters of barley, you will get X liters of straw. That is the same for all crop types, whether it's barley, wheat, or oat. So that ratio doesn't change. Obviously, the amount you yield will change. Barley produces a higher yield than oats. So naturally then your straw collection from oats has a smaller figure, but the actual ratio between the grain and the straw production remains the same. Now, as I said at the start of this video, what we're going to look at here really is income from crops. It's not strictly profit from crops. Some crops take more seeds to plant. Some crops you can plant several times, such as poplar. You plant it once and it grows several times. And again, I have to stress this is not related to precision farming. Once we get into precision farming, things change again, depending on the pH levels of the field. It's not just a yes, no, it's a different scale the soil types, degree of fertilization over certain parts of the field. So this is no precision farming, base game. But the figures we have here are very good, solid platform to go on to precision farming with. Whenever you get into precision farming, it's actually very, very hard to judge with any kind of certainty a single figure because there's too many variables and everything's on a scale and every situation is pretty much unique, especially on all the different mod maps that we have now. So this is really a jump off platform and should give us a good go at figuring out where the money is in this game. So let me just explain what we're looking at here with this spreadsheet. So what we can see is here, I've picked a certain crop and I've defined a field size. Okay, These two things, everything in yellow that you see on this sheet are the variables that we can change. So you pick any crop that you want and tell the game what size the field is. You can find that out from the map in game. On the table below that, we then have all the different factors that give bonuses. So the level of weeds, whether or not you've rolled the crop, the level of fertilizer, is the crop got lime in the ground, has the ground been plowed, and was the previous crop mulched. Each of those variables has a bonus attached to it. What I've set up here is I know the base level. I found this out through easy development. So I set it with zero bonus, and then adding in each of the bonuses now, I can then take that base crop yield and say what the adjusted crop yield will be. So for instance, if you 100% fertilize your crop, you get a 45% bonus. So I can take a base crop yield, add 45% onto it, and that'll give you your adjusted crop yield. And then if you have other bonuses on top of that, I can do that as well. Now the bonuses don't compound, 
in the sense of you don't get a 45% bonus for fertilizer and then if you lime the ground you don't get a 15% bonus including the 45% bonus. So the bonuses are all added together so it never exceeds more than 100%. Sounds a bit complicated but if you understand kind of compounding interest it makes a bit more sense. The big takeaway from it is you can never exceed 100% bonus. So the max yield you can get out of your field is essentially your base field plus 100%. Also on the right hand side of the screen you'll see we've got two tables for grain and straw against each month of the year. So as you change the crop type in the top left hand corner these tables will also change. So the way I got these figures was by flicking through month by month. So it was a one day month set to midday and I just went on to the price scale at that time and took what was the highest price. Now I didn't include the train stations on this because on the stock maps the train stations are always higher but there's also a cost associated with using the train stations. Lots of mod maps also do not have trains so I felt it was a bit unfair would have skewed the figures a little bit. So again these figures will never be exact it changes year on year it changes map on map but generally the ratios are always pretty accurate. So don't take the figure as gospel but take the approximation. So looking down the table we can see that against each month we have a price. If it's red that means it's a low price, if it's green that means it's a high price. So this table also tells you when the best time on average is to sell those crops. And then to the right of that we also have exactly the same for the straw, all done in exactly the same way. For crops that do not have straw this is just a zero value. So we're really only looking here for wheat, barley, oats. Now again I'll say this is about income for crops, not profit for crops. Because obviously once you get into productions and things like that you know that oats, if you want to turn it into flour, has a different ratio of production than the likes of barley or wheat. So, you know, perhaps harvesting one crop that gives you a slightly lower yield, but may produce more flour, could work out more profitable in the long run. Now, for example here, I'll use sugarcane and a field size of 2.02 acres. Now you can see here, I've given this a 100% bonus. Um, is no weeds in it, it has been rolled, fertilizers 100%, it has been lined, plowed and mulched. Now with that 100% bonus you can see the base crop yield is doubled from 185,312 up to 370,624. So that 185 figure is based on the fact that there was no bonus, I hadn't done any weeding, plowing, wasn't rolled, there was no fertilizer, nothing. That is the worst state that field can be in and ready to harvest. So once I add on that bonus, whether it's 100%, 45%, whatever it works out at, you get that adjusted crop figure. As you see, it's not showing anything for straw because you don't get straw from sugarcane. Looking down those tables in the right hand side, we see the values that it's pulled in for the sugarcane. Um, the green ones, 382 between July, August and September. Those are the best times to sell that. And if you were to sell those 370,624 uh, grains of sugarcane, at the best time, you would get £141,579. The table on the right hand side for straw, because this crop doesn't have straw, they are all zero values. So therefore the total income is green plus straw. In this instance, it's 141000 plus zero. So your total income is 141579 We can obviously do this for any crop that we want as well. We'll pull up wheat here. Same field, same size, 2.02 acres, but this time there is no bonuses. So this field is in horrendous state. You can see it has got large weeds, no fertilizer, etc. It hasn't been plowed, mulched, anything. So we've got the base crop yield of 14542, and the adjusted crop yield remains the same because there's no bonuses applied to it. But because this is wheat, we have straw. Now the base straw yield of this, 29,673 and the adjusted straw yield remains the same because again there's no bonuses being applied to this. And the tables on the right hand side we also see that we have prices now for straw. Obviously the red months indicate the low price and the greens indicate the high prices. We see December £154 per 1000 litres. So that gives us now this time an income from grain and an income from straw. We add those two figures together and get the total income of £21,497. Again, I will reiterate that I'm using income here because this isn't taking into any account for the cost of seeds, the cost of diesel, the cost of fertilizer, the cost of lime, anything like that. So this is really income from the fields, 
rather than profit from the fields. It'll be pretty good indicator though along the way. But the question is, what does all this mean? What can I tell from this? It's nice to know roughly how much money we might get, but I want to know, is it worth my trouble? Um, which crop performs the best? So to do that, we'll flick on now to another table that I created. And this one shows all the crops ranked in order of income. Now we'll see I've got two total columns on this. It is total including straw and total not including straw. The reason that I split these out is because you may be doing something like growing barley, but you want to sell grain and keep the straw. You may be using it for bedding for your animals, etc. So that to me just gives a better comparison for the likes of barley, oat, wheats, whenever you're comparing it to sunflowers or soybeans. So total not including the straw. That's just selling the grain on its own. But if you're growing barley to sell everything, you want to sell the grain and you want to sell the straw, and that obviously boosts the profit off it a little bit as well. So if we look at this table first off, we'll look at the total including straw. That's selling everything. And we'll see we have poplar, sugarcane, sugar beet, potatoes, cotton, and silage. Heading up that table, the top six crops. Following on, we have soybeans, barley, corn, sorghum, wheat, canola, oat, sunflowers, hay and grass. If we look at the value you get from poplars, that surprised me. I did not think they were worth that kind of money whatsoever. Now this is obviously selling things when the price is at its highest. Uh, poplars produce wood chips. Wood chips for one month of the year, maybe two months of the year, do give a high price. Now this table in no way takes into account the actual time or hours or other requirements to put that crop in. So poplar, poplar is one of those crops you can plant once and it actually grows year on year. So realistically, you've got a lot less seeding costs with it. You've got quite a bit of work the first time maybe they plant it and harvesting is slow. But if you only have to plant it once, then does that work out as less time? More time? Is it more time efficient? You see the likes of sugarcane, incredibly profitable crop, but it takes a lot of time to do, a lot of work to do and a lot of money to get into. You want to buy a sugarcane harvester, it's half a million pounds. But if you want to go out and set yourself up in silage, you think, well, it doesn't pay that much. But all you need is a tractor and a silage bit and something to collect it. You can even just mow it down and collect it up with a bucket and put it in the silage bit. It's a really good crop to get started with. It's also very well worth noting that for silage, you might only get £30,000, but you can get that three, maybe four times a year. You can get multiple crops of silage. With the likes of cottons, potatoes, sugar beet, you get one crop a year. So say we're getting 40,000 for potatoes and 29,000 for silage. Well, realistically, if you're doing four crops of silage, that 29,000 now becomes about what? 120,000 pounds? So it's really, really ramped up there. Silage is an incredibly powerful tool in this game. You can make a lot of money very quickly using it. But if you are going to be doing grass cutting, etc., you'll see at the bottom you've got hay and grass, burst crops in the game. There's no point in selling these. You're only selling them to get rid of them. Um, feed them to your cows, feed them to something. You're going to make minimal money. And if we flick on now to the second variation of this table, so this is selling it with the total not including straw. So this is just selling the grain. So you've harvested your barley, you've kept your straw, you want to give it to your cows for bedding, and you're just selling the grain. You'll see now things like barley, oat and wheat actually tumble way, way down the table again. If you don't include the straw in selling for them, then they're the worst of the grains that you can do. Hay and grass definitely remain at the bottom of the table. You know, they are substantially worse. Top ones never really change as well. Poplar, sugarcane, sugar beets, potatoes, cotton, silage, soybeans. That's your, that's your bread and butter. That's the ones you make your money from if you want to do it. And soybeans is, in my opinion, a good one to do because it's very little work. Now again, as I say, this doesn't take into account things like the amount of fertilizer you use. And if you start loading up precision farming, soybeans don't require fertilizer, or most of the time anyway, in my experience don't, because of a really low nitrogen requirement. So if you're getting good money from it, they don't require fertilizer, well that's a cost saving, or you don't have to add fertilizer over them. And it's also time saving, you don't have to run over the field again. If you've got five large fields of soybeans, that means you have to run over it to plant it, and then run over it to fertilize it. You've cut your workload in half straight off. But you know what folks, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, it was an interesting little experiment for me doing this. It uh, took me the best part of the day. Uh, I had to scratch my head a few times to figure out how to get the numbers to work. 
I thought at one stage definitely there was something wrong because Poplar's not worth that much money, but I'm going to have an experiment with that on one of my games, on one of my uh, maps, and just see, right, if I plant a couple of acres of Poplar, will it make me very rich? Because according to this, it should. If it doesn't, I'll go back and adjust the figures and fix my spreadsheet. Both of these tables on the screen here, just if you want to take a picture, take a screenshot, anything like that, just so you have a copy yourself and know roughly what you think you want to plant in your own farms. Now, right, thanks for listening, everyone. I've been Waldo P. Barnstormer. Hopefully this video has been of use to you. Join me in one of my Let's Plays and we'll see where we go from here. Cheers, guys. Bye now.